Hey everyone, I know a lot of you out there are miles away from where your story began. You're in a new land with hopes of big dreams and new beginnings. But there's something we don't talk about enough. The loneliness of being an immigrant. I moved here carrying not just my suitcase but also my culture, my memories and a heart full of hope. What I didn't pack was the realization of how isolating this new chapter could be. Walking through streets that don't echo my language, where smiles are friendly yet unfamiliar, can feel like moving through a silent movie. Back home, community was not just a word. It was my weekend mornings, my noisy dinners, my late night conversations. Here, the quietness of my apartment is a stark contrast to the laughter and chatter I left behind. And I know I'm not alone in feeling alone. Connecting here is different. It's not just about learning a new language, but about decoding a million little social cues that were never part of my life before. Every hello is overthought. Every friendship feels like a step further from where I began, but it's also a step closer to where I need to be. For My name is Mboi. I am a nurse. I practice adult nursing in the United Kingdom, specifically Wales. So in this channel, we talk about migration, we talk about nursing, we talk about traveling and everything else. So today we are going to talk about something very interesting. I'm not sure if this is a proper way to pronounce it, but I think it's interesting. It's sad but it's also an eye-opener and it might help people who are aspiring migrants or who are already in the process of coming into the United Kingdom. So you know that when you are a content creator, you are probably going to be on different social media platforms. As of me, I am on Twitter, which is an X app. I don't usually use that. I am on Instagram, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on YouTube, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm also on TikTok and Facebook. So, all my social media platforms have the same handle as my YouTube, except for uh, Instagram. On my Instagram is Angelina underscore Madrid. So, when I was going through one of my social media platforms, which is Facebook, by the way, I came across a sad story, but a very interesting story, which might help people to have an insight of what is really happening in UK. As an immigrant, you know that when you come into the United Kingdom or anywhere else in around the world, you know that you are very excited you are only looking at the positive things more than the negative ones but immediately when you settle in you will have you will be experiencing the negative part of being an immigrant so this is a story that i'm going to read through i obtained the story from facebook i did not get a chance to ask the owner um of the post for me to reveal his names so i will refrain from posting his names or her names on on youtube but i'll go through the story read it through and then this will give you at least a glimpse of what really happens once you settle in in united kingdom I want I don't want to lie this is how most of the immigrants feel like I'm saying this because I also have had comments inboxes and also calls from other people that have been able to obtain my numbers and reach out on to me so it's not all sweet sweet and lovely sometimes we experience lemons it's very difficult and this is why we encourage people to reach out 
when you come to the United Kingdom or if you decide to migrate from anywhere in the world to join a different country, just know that you are going to experience cultural differences. You are going to experience different accents. You are going to experience different language. And for that matter, you need support. So it's wise for people to mention to people that are very close to them that they are going to leave the country that they are coming from originally and migrate to a new foreign city. Because if you don't tell people that you are leaving, it's going to be hard to talk to people that I am now in UK and this is happening. You know, it would be hard to approach people when you did not say anything when you are leaving. So to my colleagues, to the viewers or to the followers on my YouTube, my Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, this is what I'm going to put to you. If you are migrating, it's wise to tell people that you are leaving. Because when you experience problems, it will be much easier to reach out. As a migrant myself, I know that people are experiencing mental health issues. And for you to be able to overcome that problem is when you join support groups. Support groups does not necessarily mean you need to be in a professional support group. You can be in a informal support group like a WhatsApp group of people or in, in your same, in, in, in your community. Or you can join a church group or you can talk to your peers who are working in the same workplace if you feel comfortable or you can also join associations if you are a professional there are associations that are meant to help the professional people to deal with their emotional and well-being so as a nurse i know that one of the professional bodies that help nurses in United Kingdom to deal with psychological and emotional difficulties is RCN. RCN, if you are a member, you can be able to obtain or gain access to therapy and psychological support or even legal advice towards immigration law and legislature. So I'm going to read through this post and it's going to give you an insight of briefly what happens when you come in UK or any other parts of the world. So, let's get into that. So, this is the post that I came across on Facebook. Here it goes. I'm going to read through everything and I'll be back. One of the biggest oversights I made prior to moving to the United Kingdom was presuming I would get here and easily adjust to everything, since I had been here plenty of times. I was so attuned to being here as a visitor, and I had the assumptions that my permanent stay would equally be the same. I was wrong. The friends who would usually hook up with me, pick me up and tour the country with me needed to be at work and so did I. The only support they could give me was virtual. The statement I hated the most was, this is a normal feeling you are going through. You will eventually adjust. I didn't think I would. I felt as if I was drowning in myself. Nothing made sense. I had to deal with getting around places I didn't know, and mostly on my own. I had to deal with waking up each morning and wishing I was back home. If you saw my WhatsApp statuses, 
or Facebook posts at the time, you would have sworn I was living my best life, but I wasn't. I was far from it. I would go to Nando's and in Reading and have a meal on my own while scrolling through my contacts to try and find someone I could invite for a meal. I would bring some friends back home and speak to them and ask them not to hang up. I just needed to feel normal. It was a heartbreaking face. Everything I would get a text from friends all over the world asking me how it was in the UK. I hated that question. I had to pretend to my family that everything was okay. On so many occasions, I woke up and almost packed up to return back home. I knew I would regret that decision the second I landed at Tambo International Airport. En route to Bulawayo, because I had in I had dismantled my life in Johannesburg, which had become home to me for twelve years. That's exactly how I felt when I moved from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, to the, to to Johannesburg in twenty ten. But it wasn't as bad because home was just an hour away. I had to dig dip into myself and speak to myself almost every minute and push myself. It was it was and still is the thought of my mother and siblings not having everything they needed that woke me up every morning. There was almost public opinion that I was worried about. What will people say if I move back home? Just after three months, it bothered me. I'm not really one to be bothered by public opinions. I have lived half my life listening to people think this and that of me. I have even gotten to a point where some opinions of me aren't jaw-dropping anymore. I smile and think, ah, what's new there? I was just worried that I would be called a failure. I kept thinking, Kuzatiwa, I moved to UK, Napenduga, Yelalut, Ngingilalut. I think that means, but what lo ring, ki movile UK, yaba ki kutla kisna leto. So, I had to soldier on. Not for anyone but myself. I knew there was a point I mentally needed to reach. And once I reached it, I would never look back. I spent my first Christmas here in 2022. It triggered me, but I got over it. When I thought I had almost adjusted, I lost my dad. And then had to deal with that loss on my own. It felt like I was moving backwards. Losing my dad taught me so many lessons. The biggest one was or is to be a soldier. I don't count the lives that I have been lost. I protect the ones that remain. One of the biggest challenges we face in this Life as men is regulating pain, especially pain that comes from fearing failure and disappointing the ones we love. Admitting I had failed in some areas of my life was my first step towards mastering the ability to regulate what I feel. And understand that it happens to anyone. I kept pressing forward and reminded myself that tomorrow will always be better. This is to 
appreciate everyone who has taken time to read the post. I'll go through every comment and report and respond in appreciation when my time pe permits. It's heartwarming to see comments from people of all walks of life. And I will also respond to the nasty ones as well, but with kindness because love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposites. Nelson Mandela. So this is the story that I had obtained from Facebook and I wanted to share with you colleagues, colleagues, viewers, because I know some of you are going through the same thing, but it's very difficult to actually reach out. So yeah, you are not alone. For anyone feeling this weight, remember, it's okay to feel out of place. It's okay to miss the familiar. But also remember, every experience is a stretch of our roots, making room for new soil. Reach out, connect, share your story. It's richer than you think. Join community groups, participate in local activities, and maybe, just maybe, start to feel at home again. We might have left our homelands, but we carry them within us. They shape our smiles, our thoughts, our every interaction. We are the bridges between worlds, the pioneers of our narratives. And yes, while the journey is lonely, it's also incredibly brave. So let's be brave together. Remember, it's not just about surviving in a new world, but about thriving, about weaving your thread into the fabric of this new life. And who knows, one day, someone else will find comfort in the home you've built here, far from where your story began. Stay strong, keep pushing, and never forget where you came from, because it's a vital part of where you're going.